Welcome to Hollywood Blockbusters. I am your host, Joe Hollywood. And once again, I'm joined by Imagine Host Pete. Hey, hey. And Andrew Walker. Hello, hello. George Johnson, special guest, brought a couple of friends. We got a packed house today. Yes. How you doing, guys? <laughs> Good to see you, George. Thanks for joining now, us. Now, is, is, is this your brother? Last name? Yeah, no I mean, relation. There no are a relation. lot of Johnsons in this I area. I guess there but, are a uh, lot of Johnsons. We're kind of, we're a lot of Johnsons in this room. <laughs> kindred <laughs> spirits, I would imagine, though. But I'll be honest. I, I thought my meds were kicking. I said, we have more people in the, in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did read somewhere that if, if I were to run into someone in this area named Johnson, we're probably related. There are, uh, uh, the Johnson name goes way back here in this area. Oh, yeah. Uh, so today's theme is as seen on TV. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, movies that were based on television programs and television programs based on movies. All right. And, I like that we uh, kept that vague. Whether yeah. <laughs> we'll save the good or bad for when we get into the show. Now it's funny you say that because there are some good movies, but mostly bad. Yeah. It seems like whenever uh, filmmakers try to jump from the big screen to the small screen or vice versa, usually it seems like the result is unpleasant. A um, lot of bad movies out there, which we can talk about in a little bit. Um, a few good ones. I'm trying to think, like, for me, let's start off with uh, movies based on TV shows. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think, what's the best movie I've ever seen based on a TV show? And I created a, a, a quick list, um, trying to think what jumps out at me. Now, one that comes to mind, I don't know if this is the best one, but one that comes to mind is there was a short-lived TV series. It only ran about six seven episodes uh, called Police Squad. You remember Police Squad, Leslie Nielsen? Yes. And for some reason, it did not catch on on television, and I think it got canceled before all of the episodes aired. Um, but then, I don't know what happened. With the passage of time, they decided, well, maybe it's best suited for a movie that they created called The Naked Gun from the files of the police squad. And it was a monster, monster hit. And they reused a lot of jokes from the TV show in the movie. And it was absolutely hilarious. Uh, I remember one of the hardest times I ever left watching a movie is when he's out on the ledge and uh, he's sneaking around the ledge on the outside of the building. And as he falls, he grabs this concrete statue uh, by an awkward part. And I'm telling you, <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I had a roommate at the time. He came out. I was like, what is going on in here? And I'm like, this is hysterical. So I will say that one of the funniest movies ever made was based on a TV show. What do you, do you guys remember uh, Police Squad or, or yeah. Naked Gun? Yeah, I do. I do because the end part kind of, uh, this is George speaking for anybody who doesn't know my voice yet, but <laughs> uh, the end, instead of having the credits where you have a freeze frame and the, and the credits rolling up, they all just stood there and, and tried to be as still as possible. And they kind of blinked and looked around and they took deep breaths. That made me laugh so hard. But Leslie Nielsen, I mean, he played a, he played the straight guy from, you know, you go back to like the 50s and 60s. The he was sci-fi and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he, was, uh, he was always the straight. He played the straight roles. And then later on, he <laughs> plays these. And um, gosh, who's his sidekick in that? Uh uh, Kennedy, uh, George Kennedy, George yeah. Kennedy, George was, Kennedy, yeah, who's yeah. also, you know, he's from some pretty strange, pretty wartime movies and things like that is, his, is his side man. God, yeah. Funny stuff. And that's what makes the movie work is they, they, they're not playing it like a comedy. They're playing it like they're in a drama and that's what makes it so funny. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's definitely one of the funniest movies uh, to be based on a uh, TV show. One of my favorite movies based on a TV show, because I had no idea how they were going to pull this off, but when I was a teenager, I loved The Muppet Show. You know, I tuned in every week. They had crazy cast of guest stars that rotated in every week, and it was always silly vaudeville-type humor. And then I remember hearing that they were going to do a live-action film, and it's like, how are you going to do Muppets in the real world and when the Muppet movie came out, I think it was like 78 or 79, something like that, uh, it blew my mind. They had uh, an incredible uh, list of guest stars that showed up in the movie. Um, the scene alone of like Kermit riding a bicycle <laughs> where you're sitting in a theater going, how is this possible? And then you kind of see the behind the scenes 
uh, later, how they pulled it off. It was all practical effects back then. Jim Heston. And Jim yeah, Heston and mind. it's a musical, and there's yeah. great songs in it and everything. And so, yeah, one of my all-time favorite movies based on a TV show is The Muppet Movie. It's a classic that still holds up today. Do you guys have any memories of watching The Muppet Movie? Why are there so many? <laughs> <laughs> that world, that yeah, that rainbow. gave us, that gave the world the rainbow connection. I know I had to have watched it at a young age, but I don't have any distinct memories of that particular movie uh, compared to, say, like Muppets Christmas Carol, which I was pretty, classic. I was young when that came out, and yeah. I watched it many times, and That's a I classic, that Christmas Carol <laughs> yeah. with yeah. uh, uh Kane, Michael Kane, Michael yeah. Kane. Yeah. phenomenal yeah. acting. Like he's great. not in front of any. I hundred percent. That's a great one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw. I, I totally agree with this. I saw someone recently say that what makes uh, the Muppet Christmas Carol so great is that Michael Kane is playing it like he's in a serious yeah. drama yes. with yes. peers. Yes. Like he treated the Muppets like peers. And yes. last time I watched it, which might have been this past Christmas, I'm like, he's he's just putting it a hundred percent effort into this thing he was amazing in this he, movie he doesn't break in a way that you would think he's talking to muppets he, he just plays it completely oh of course he plays it straight because it's scrooge but like yeah the man's like a true said, professional yeah, yeah. yeah it is yeah. it's a testament to his professionality and his yeah. and his craft absolutely yeah dare i say almost an oscar worthy performance he was fantastic really truly so let's go around the the room nick uh what what is at or near the top of your list as far as movies based on TV shows? For me, uh, we were talking about this a little bit before the sh- uh, before we got on here. I loved The Fugitive mm-hmm. with Harrison Ford. When that came out, I said, oh, how are we going to turn this into a, into a movie? There's, there's so much content here. But they did it. They got the one-armed man. Yeah. Harrison Ford gave a great performance. Tommy Lee Jones. I mean, I loved it. And then the other one that I enjoyed was The Equalizer. Now that's a more recent one. Let, yeah. well, let's get back to the fugitive for a second. I think one of the, the the benefits that the Harrison Ford movie had is my generation didn't have any memories of the original TV show. When did the original TV show air? Like in the fifties or sixties or something like that. I wouldn't say the sixties. Yeah, and so I had you know no memory of the TV show. I was aware of it. I knew it existed. I knew about the one armed man. And so the benefit of the movie coming along when it did is there was a whole generation of people that saw it as fresh and new and original, not realizing that it was based on a TV series from the 60s. Well, I was just watching reruns with my with my, my parents because they'd, they'd watch it, and I was going, what's this weird show? Why is this guy always running? Why, why did they leave this doctor alone? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I think it's in my, in my top ten as far as Harrison Ford movies. I thought it was a great, great performance in Tommy Lee Jones. What, mm-hmm. I, what I find encouraging is that you could watch that movie and not know about the TV series, and if it still is enjoyable, that tells me how good of a job that they did in the adaptation. Yeah. Whereas I, I'd, I'd, I would watch it with friends, and they didn't know it was based off a TV series. Yeah, exactly. I, just, I didn't until a couple years ago, honestly. Until three or four years ago, I didn't know there was a TV series. <laughs> Andrew, Absolutely. every time we think there's a basement, to, <laughs> you just find. Now, since since we're on the topic, the reason uh, that we're going with this theme this week is there's a new movie coming out later this year uh, called The Fall Guy. And I can't remember if I brought it up with you or somebody else, yeah, yeah. but I said, oh, yeah, that's a, a movie based on the TV series. And they're like, what now? Yeah, I and, had no idea. I, yeah. I, I, I saw the preview. With uh, with the guys, uh, who I love, Ryan Gosling, and I'm like, oh, this is an, an, another you know action comedy. Hopefully, hopefully it's good. And then you said that's that's based on a 1980s <laughs> Lee Majors TV series. I said, are you kidding me? Yeah, it's really it's kind of an interesting thing because if you're looking at the demographic that they're trying to hit, they should have done this 20 years ago. But, like I said, it has the advantage that The Fugitive had in that there's a generation who's not aware of the show, so they're coming in as if this is yeah, a brand new complete, concept. Completely new, like yeah. for me, yeah. And it's already been screened, I think it was at the South by Southwest yes. Film Festival, yeah. and people friggin' love it. it got, really? It yeah. Got good reviews. And yep. I think it was Ryan Gosling said he was at some get-together, maybe it was around the Oscars or something, and he saw Steven Spielberg approaching him, and he's like, oh, is he, is he coming at me? <laughs> 
And he like was freaking out and he, Steven Spielberg's making a beeline for him. And he went up and like shook his hand and said, I love the fall guy. And he was like, really? <laughs> Steven nice. Spielberg loved the fall guy. So nice. I'm kind of excited. But now I do have memories of the TV show. Like you said, Lee Majors, Heather Thomas was very, you know, she was the cheesecake Smoking. factor. Yeah. And Lee Majors sang the theme song uh, <laughs> of the show, which was oh, hilarious. Right. Is it kind of um, like I'm Just the, Ken? Uh, sort of. No, yeah. I'm yeah. Joking. Think <laughs> paint your wagon. <laughs> yeah, right. Now the funny thing about this theme song is he says, he says something along the lines of in the theme song, I'm not one to kiss and tell, but I've seen, I've been seen with Farrah. Well, he was married to Farrah Fawcett. That's right. That's and so right. it's kind of interesting that he name dropped her in the uh, theme song from the movie. But uh, I'm I'm kind of fired up. I'm look, I, I think it's coming out in May or something yeah, like fairly, that. So, fairly soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah there's so. a time period where everybody hated uh, Lee Majors. You can't have that much talent and have Farrah Fawcett. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I mean why? I mean, that, just you're just rubbing in people's faces. Fair. Yeah. Um, so that's that inspired uh, today's topic uh, of. Uh, Movies based on TV shows and vice versa. Um, now, you mentioned The Equalizer. So yeah. The Equalizer started out uh, as a TV show, correct? Yep. And I forget the act, the gray-haired gentleman who was The Equalizer, uh, the actor who played him. British I, I'm actor. British, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I I watched it periodically, but I, was, I wasn't like, you know, I didn't watch it religiously. Yeah, I wasn't as gung-ho as I was with The Fugitive. But when yeah. I saw, they said Denzel's playing The, Fu the Equalizer one. Yeah. Really? Now, okay. the thing that shocks me about the Equalizer is I was like at Target and I'm looking at DVDs and it, there's a DVD on the show that says Equalizer 3. And I'm like, oh, is that where we're at now? Mm -hmm. Three Equalizers have been done? Yeah. I haven't seen them. I'm embarrassed to admit I haven't watched the Equalizer movies. Have you guys seen them? And no. what are your thoughts? My God, are you venturing into Andy's territory? <laughs> like, what is corrupt? this? I think he's corrupting me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I saw the, when I first heard, that Denzel was going to be in. I said, okay, well, this will be interesting. Let me go check it out. And when I saw it, I said, oh, he's challenging Creasy Bear for Man on Fire. <laughs> this part of this is in here. Hmm. That, that was a great, when he, the performance he gave was was excellent. I was going, oh my God, this guy is a dangerous man. There is a scene near the end where he he asked, he asked the villain, he goes, you know, you asked me what, what you see when you, when I look into your eyes, what do you see when you look into mine? I went, and then the, the way Fuqua kind of, directed that and showed it he hangs on denzel's <laughs> eyes and denzel has the jaws look i kept thinking of uh, he's like the black eyes yeah the like, the, doll's like a doll's eyes. eyes i was like yeah they, they, that's it there's the doll's eyes right there you're all gonna die this man is gonna kill you yeah now i've seen clips where you know he's about ready to start a ruckus and he sets his little stopwatch and oh no and yeah. he's like oh 15 seconds that took too long you know no that his performance this the second movie it seems to always be the one that suffers. It's the reverse yeah, Empire Strikes Middle Back. Act, yeah. yeah, for some reason, they get that, I don't know what they're doing. And they redeem themselves with the third one. They try to mm. give it a good closeout. Like, if they're going to do any more Equalizer stuff, it won't be with Denzel. He did his nice little trilogy. He's done. He did yeah. a good setup. And it's a good character progression for how this man's trying to find peace. Because this is a, basically a damaged individual, a weapon that was let, let off the chain, that you know, and then all of a sudden yeah. bad guys happen to come across it. Yeah. yeah, and he just wants peace. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, started out as a TV show, yeah. ventured into three movies. It is now a TV show again, right? Right, With Queen, Queen Latifah, Latifah yeah, as the right. Equalizer. <laughs> Has right. anyone seen it? I, I don't know what to series. expect. So There's just so I'm much curious. TV. I'm, I'm already behind. And when, I know. Network is the one that always suffers because I go network TV or streaming and, and cable. Yeah. Yep. So. I'm just curious, like, does she take out? Six guys in fifteen seconds, well, or does is, he take a different on approach? On season, it's going to be starting season three, so it's been wow. getting greenlit. So it's it's doing its job on right. network. I may have to check it out. I, I think to your point, in terms of of having a lot of uh, a lot of options now, I think that's where IMDb and, and Rotten Tomatoes comes in because mm -hmm. I hate to say it, when I start looking through things, I'll I'll say, wow, that looks really interesting. And the first thing I do, just knee-jerk reaction, is I go to IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes and I find out what other people, because I don't want to get excited. Yeah. Um, I don't want to go down that road and watch the first, the first, uh, the, the pilot, and then and maybe the first two or three after that, and then realize that I've invested into something that, that's that got a great, because it seems to me like anybody can have a great idea. Mm -hmm. It's it, Great ideas are, are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the middle part is... You know, whether the middle part is good or bad, it's not that big of a deal. But the ending, 
how you tie everything out, uh, together, yeah. that's the really tough part to do. Yeah. And to your point about the reverse uh, Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> I love that because Empire Strikes Back is far it's better like than peak. Star Wars. Yeah. Although Star Wars was amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, agreed. But um, the problem with that is that you'll see the pilot being really good, and then you'll see the second and third they're just kind of wandering. Did you guys ever see a show called Rubric? No. Anyway, it, no. there's a few of them that I've seen where it's such a great idea and it just falls apart. Anyway. Yeah, there, mm. there there's shows like that. And what things I'm a big execution guy. Like you know, you're like George was saying, there's you can have ideas, but you got to execute it. Mm. And based on your own, you know, you create whatever you, rules in your story, then don't violate it. It's almost like to say, well, oh crap, we wrote ourselves into a corner. Yeah. And then magic new character has a power that comes and saves, or some like, <laughs> random third party comes and saves saves this character. I'm like, oh well, that's yeah. that's unfortunate. That kind of that kind of reminds me of the, the TV show sex. Lost. I wasn't a big fan uh. of the TV show Lost, but they did not have an ending planned, and you you will not convince yeah. me that they did. And Agreed. after several seasons, they were like, eh, they were all in purgatory, and I'm like. You suck. So pretty much like, the, the same on. thing oh. that J.J. Abrams did with uh, Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> no, he, had, he had no yeah. idea what he you was doing. No out. You just see like the outline of the middle finger coming like, no, don't give me the middle finger. Don't give the audience <laughs> the middle finger. Like, it's coming. Like, oh. You got to have the conclusion in mind at, to take us on that journey. Otherwise, it, you're just making it up as you go along. I, I will say this. When it comes to all the remakes based off you know, TV shows and movies, what's happening now is that uh, you're getting a lot of like batting averages, like the Detroit Tigers, like 178, like lower than 200. For anyone that that is not a baseball fan, if you can hit one out of three, you're going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. When you're hitting zero out of 100, <laughs> two out of 100, <laughs> you're like, uh, you might want to just, you know, take a whistle and blow on it or step into a pitch. Yeah. <laughs> and- Shamalan comes to mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. A lot of things are getting green lit. Uh, Andrew, uh, what's up? Or near the top of your list of movies based on TV shows. I my list is is longer in the opposite direction, but a movie that I did love based on a show that I loved uh, was the Simpsons movie. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw that in the theater when it came out, two thousand seven. I grew up big nineties kid that just loved, loved, loved the Simpsons, and uh, I, everything about the movie just it, it hit all the right spots. And I, I haven't watched it in forever, um, but it made more money than I thought. It had a yeah. budget of seventy five, but it made five hundred and thirty six million. Well, so it, yeah. it made a, a good amount of money. It yeah, the, going to. Everybody, everybody saw it. Yeah. The interesting um, thing about the Simpsons movie, now I'm I'm of the uh, the opinion that the first ten years or so of the Simpsons is some of the greatest television ever made. Yes. I, I own the first 100% 10 seasons on agree. DVD. Well written, well yeah. conceived. Yeah, it just, the, the writers were just brilliant and made incredible commentary. Then there started to be a turnover of, of writers who yeah. I felt were trying to imitate the Simpsons style but not quite achieving it. So by the time the movie came around, I was like, man, you're like 10 years too late. Um, but then I went to go see it in the theater and it blew me away. It, it really held to the standards standards that were set during that first 10 years or so. I, I, think, I yep. could tell when the, they brought old writers back to help write on that movie. I, and I could tell parts where the old writers came in, the part when the president's picking the plans. <laughs> He's like, two, yeah. double it, four. I think like was. in the early 2000s uh, is when they started getting to the point of it's like, okay, you, we've we've done this many episodes. We're we're starting to kind of do the same thing with these episodes over and over again. And then, yeah, like you said, this came out in 2007. So I, I view that as like the capstone of the series. Mm-hmm. And I I haven't I don't remember how many years it's been since I've actually watched a new episode. It's been a long time. Yeah, and, and it's the, it's getting to that part now for the TV series. The voices are changing. Like you can hear it in their voices now. And I don't. Yeah, want, they're sounding older now. Yeah. You know, this is like you know, if had Barry Sanders not retired, I didn't want to watch Barry run for two hundred <laughs> yards a season and just to get the record. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, yeah. go out on top. Kind of and thing. I feel like I that, that Fox is keeping it alive just for the sake of keeping it alive. And I don't think yeah. really anyone's watching it anymore. No, I, I, think, um, I think they're doing it out of spite now because they ripped on Fox <laughs> so much over the years. Oh yeah, they had it written <laughs> their into their contract that yeah. they could make fun of. Fox and oh sure satirize Fox. And, this yeah. is their revenge now. You don't get to quit. Keep going until your throat falls out. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like a deal with the devil. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I I have to say I was pleasantly surprised by the Simpsons movie. 
Uh, one thing I did not expect was full frontal nudity from Bart yeah. Simpson, which oh, yeah. shocked the <laughs> heck out of me. The, that, the, the way that gag uh, paid off is he's on the skateboard naked, and they're doing everything in their power to cover up his naughty bits. And then he hits this hedge where only his naughty bits are exposed. And I'm sitting in the theater like, what the hell did I just see? And I've never seen that in an animated film before. And it was absolutely well, hysterical. South Park. Bigger, louder, not. Oh, Park. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> South Park was, if anything, South Park was going to do it before <laughs> the Simpsons did it. Because they had that big thing. Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Like, no, not this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of South Park, there's another uh, animated series that... Uh, released a, a film and it was highly acclaimed critical darling people loved uh bigger longer uncut and to the point where this the one of the songs got an oscar nomination <laughs> yeah. and who was it like i think robin williams like performed it at the oscars or something like i that. think it was blame was canada it's either blame canada was it blame Can yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah or what would brian boytana do but i think it's i think blame it was canada. blame, canada. blame yeah. canada yeah and so it was recognized with an oscar i don't think it won but they performed the song at the oscars so i never expected a south park movie to get oscar recognition parker and stone thought they were, they were being trolled yeah when they got the invite like look at this they were making fun of like oh it's real like, oh oh my god what yeah yeah so south park they're 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 kind of rain with the uh with the satire and po political commentary and all that stuff they've it, taken over because they had they can talk about anything that's happening right now like yeah if you want and they, they could they turn would, it out quickly too they yeah. would make an episode about israel gaza right now i guarantee you it's probably happening right now <laughs> oh yeah for the season day be like their season day they're going like oh, we're going there. i'm like oh boy <laughs> yeah so that's another uh animated series that released a movie and was a, a smash uh success um, what else you got? Uh, you mentioned the Simpsons. You got another one? Uh, yeah. Also in terms of, uh, uh, animation, um, the early Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon show, I think it debuted in probably 87 or 88. Yeah. The uh, series? I, I thought it was yeah. a little bit later than that. I thought it was like and, May 89. And I, I know the, the first film came out in 89 and I think... I can't remember which came first, but I'm pretty sure the series the series came first. Well, there was yeah, a comic comic first, yeah. Then I think okay. it was the animated series. Then animated, then movie. Then yeah. you're like live action film. How are they going to pull this right. off? And it was awesome. I I loved it. I I loved <laughs> I loved the everything about it. I my parents bought me all the toys and everything, oh, yeah. and I loved watching on Saturday mornings. And I then, thought they killed Raphael in that movie. I was I was traumatized <laughs> to him. Like he's not moving. Like get up. And I haven't watched it in several years. But the last time I did watch it, I remember this holds up decently well for yeah. being made in 1989 and being based on a cartoon series. Yeah, I, I just I really really enjoyed it. And it yeah, I think it was uh, the Jim Henson yes, people. Yes. They uh, they yep, did the yeah. costumes, which were surprisingly flexible and let the actors do martial arts moves and everything which is really really impressive they could actually emote in those i actually was yeah. pretty impressed uh, that jim henson was like oh, ah, shock anger rage yeah. yeah yeah and then now some people and i don't think i would agree with this but some people liked two better than one that's the vanilla ice and, uh, yeah that was the vanilla ice <laughs> movie and uh that man I that man has like an impact on the industry that you cannot imagine yeah and then over the past <laughs> few years they've tried to reboot ninja turtles and they the designs are disturbing like they yeah uh, they're not as um fun as as the original one was and they're kind of hard to look at it's it's i'm not a fan of the recent movies but I just rewatched uh, the 1990 version uh, a couple of years ago, and I agree with you. It holds up. It's very, very entertaining. Yeah, really yeah. good. I yeah. would say that along those lines, that Transformers was originally the cartoons. That was a lot of fun. We watched yeah. those, I think, in the mid-'80s. Mm -hmm. And when they came out with the movie, to your point, it was so overproduced or over— oh, I don't yeah. know, the shapes and things that they transformed in and out of were so geometrical and so tough that— they tried to make the cars and the yeah. toys that way, and it was a pain in the neck to try and put them together and get them to do anything. You could just, <laughs> you know, in the in the in the show it goes, oh my, right, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. they, they grow or whatever. And in 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 real time, you're sitting there pulling something and you're pushing something. And 20 minutes later, ta da! <laughs> yeah. Know? But it was it was I did I did like some of the Transformer movies, but they didn't have the same. I don't know camp. Or I don't even know what you what you yeah. call that. Camp. The, I mean the cartoon trauma. The movie. 
in the Transformers movie traumatized me because they killed Prime in that. They, yeah. Yes. That was. Yes. He watched, he's like, die, Autobahn. It's like, what's going to happen? He shoots yeah. Braun and goes, he's not getting him. Like, get up. Now, that's <laughs> the thing. Like, if, if you talk to someone who's a Transformers fan, hardcore fan, and you say, which of the Transformers movies do you like best? They're like, the animated one. Like, I guess, I, I don't recall ever seeing the animated theatrical release yeah, Transformers I movies. But that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, 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 that's the one where he died. That was traumatic. It, <laughs> what did you do? And then to have him be alive and the same actor's voice, which was yeah. really impressive to yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, no, those, those, those cartoon guys were bastards. They, they deserve <laughs> it. Because what happened after that, they did that because G.I. Joe was going to kill Duke. And then when they they saw and they were like Duke's gonna kill we're gonna kill Prime and then they saw what happened to the audience they're like we can't kill oh Duke's in a medical thing induced coma like I'm like a serpent went through his heart what kind of medical what are we talking about here and then the the, the TV people the animators for the cartoon series for Travis brought Prime back and killed him again oh my god this was like they're like and when they kill him because they turn him into like a zombie and then he, Peter uh, uh, the the, uh, um, the voice actor yeah the, Peter Cullen Peter Cullen yeah yeah gave he probably would have won an Emmy for it he's like monsters they tur- you know <laughs> they turned me into a weapon to destroy those I loved in life I'm like what is he saying <laughs> I, I'm like a ten year old I'm like well, well you're back no, no what are you doing he's like yeah and he does like a kamikaze run to take everyone out and people are like this no will be his farewell I'm like what is happening I'm crying. The announcer comes back, stay tuned next week to the return of Optimus Prime. I'm like, what are you doing with my emotions, man? You can't do this to a kid. Like, I just saw him die. Like, like his face was melted and scarred. And he's like, yeah. until all are one. I'm like, what is going on? Did therapy help at all? Or no, no, it scarred people. Because I feel like we just dug up some No, really... no, thank you. I'm glad this is the therapy. <laughs> that was, uh, I'm having flashbacks. I'm just now, see, that's people who go like, I bet we could mess with some kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, the interesting thing, so the animated series is on TV. There was talk of doing a live action movie, and I'm like, come on, man. And then I remember seeing like some test animation. It might have been in a, some car commercial. And they show a car, like, transform into a robot and start dancing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, the effect was amazing. And so then they released the first Transformers movie, the live-action movie. And I was blown away by the technology. Now, the the one complaint I have about the first Transformers movie, and it kind of goes along what you were saying earlier, is when all the bad guys and the good guys are all fighting in a big climax, climactic battle i don't know who's who like a a plane explodes and i'm like i don't know if i'm supposed to be sad or not who was that (laughs) yep and and so the it it was just a blur of action and i couldn't tell who was who so i kind of it kind of lost me toward the end of the movie but i was blown away by the technology that allowed that yeah Yeah. michael bay's like i I don't have anything for the story more explosions yeah Yeah. i will say this I, i enjoyed the first trans transformers movie but I actually loved Dark of the Moon, which was the one that Leonard Nimoy came in and yeah. voiced uh, one of the characters. The, the Sentinel Prime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this movie has emotion <laughs> and some weight to it. And I'm like, wow, I really reacted to that movie. So Just, Dark of the Moon's pretty good. I, I, am a, uh, I am a giant, giant turd of a hypocrite because even though I criticize those movies, my friend and I almost kind of go... It's almost like we're, we're punishing ourselves, like we hit ourselves, like the, the guy, the, the the monk from uh, Da Vinci Code. <laughs> like we keep hitting ourselves. We're like, we're going to go watch the movie. We're like, oh, gotta, it's still Transformers. We've got to watch. And then we're like, you know, all the things that were wrong with this movie. Yeah. But now, like, I will say this. I can probably count on one hand the number of movies I've walked out of, like in a theater. Um, and the last night which yeah. is one of the more recent ones, I got up and walked out of. <laughs> and I'm going to I'm gonna steal a line from uh, Mr. Howell on Gilligan's Island. He said, I'd walk out of that movie on an airplane. <laughs> um, it was awful. The last night was uh, the first 10 minutes or so. I had no idea what was going on. It was jumping from location to location. I was lost. And I just, I was like a dealer in Vegas. I'm, and, I'm out. I got up and walked and out. And this is how I know that Bernie made up screwed Hollywood because you had Anthony Hopkins, Stanley Tucci, John Malkovich, all make, all having roles in these movies, and they needed that paycheck. <laughs> they needed that paycheck. They knew yeah. the script. These are Oscar winners. They needed oh, yeah. that paycheck. Is it, wasn't John Turturro? Yeah, in, John Turturro. I mean, every, in, yeah. all these classic yeah. actors are in there because you know what? Bernie did it to him. Nah. <laughs> or now, somebody. I will say this. If you haven't seen Bumblebee, check out Bumblebee. I, yeah, I absolutely heard it's loved Bumblebee. 
uh, Haley uh, Stein. They cha- because they changed the designs. I can't remember what George. It didn't look as like a bunch yeah. of rocks, like sharp rocks. And well, in the too. animated series, Bumblebee was a VW Bug, and so it was yeah. kind of yeah. cool that they brought back the VW yeah. Bug for as a Camaro, that wasn't movie. it? Well, the Camaro was in Transformers was, and oh, those oh, early they went movies. back to the Bug. And yeah. Bumblebee, it was a VW Beetle, and it makes and much it more great. sense than Camaro. Yeah. Honestly, it really does. So yeah. nice. some people might not watch that movie and just dismiss it, and uh, I'm like, no, check it out. It was a good uh, girl in her car story. I really, really enjoyed Bumblebee. So, yeah. All right, George, um, why don't you give us one or two of your favorite uh, movies inspired by television? Star Trek. I can't we believe go. we're, uh, what, 30 minutes into the podcast, and this is the first time it's coming up. <laughs> you guys uh, have regular Star Trek references? Is that like the gravitation pull? <laughs> <laughs> it pulls you back? Yeah. No, that's a that's a great one to bring up. So um, the first one that came out, we saw when I was a kid, and it was the terrible. Picture, yeah. yeah, The first one was absolutely terrible. Yeah. But I think, and, it, and if you look at, at the old reviews on it, you had such a low budget from the 60s. You know, you had... People literally going, or yeah, yeah, for the doors, or you know, things like that, and it was pretty hokey. And some of the, some of the, you know, Kirk would get thrown up against a wall, and the whole thing would like move. You know, yeah, like, what yeah. the hell's going on with the Starship Enterprise? This thing's falling apart. Yeah. Suddenly now they have a much bigger budget, and suddenly there's maybe the Stanley Kubrick 2001 effect where, or yes. everything is much heavier. There's much more gravity. The 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 sets are more solid. They're filming with much better equipment. It's not the same lighting that they used for, you know, Days of Our Lives a half hour earlier. <laughs> and it makes all the difference so that when they come back fighting with number two, Star Trek Two, I don't remember if that's Wrath of Khan. Yeah, that's, that's Wrath of Khan, Wrath of which Khan, most people regard the greatest Star Trek movie ever. Oh, yeah, ever and, and, yeah. and who knew that it was... It was uh, Ricardo, from Fan- uh, Ricardo Montalban Ricardo Montalban from Montalban. Fantasy Island. Crack. And you thought that he would come out... Welcome, welcome. Instead, he was this <laughs> mean bastard who put like, yeah, wig, like ear, earwigs, earwigs in your whatever yeah, they yeah. are. These worms into your up. head. I'm like, that Chekhov? scared me so bad. And Ram- Ricardo Montalban has gone on record saying that is his chest that we see in yeah. that movie. A lot of people said it, it was is. like a, it was a, a what do you call that? A prosthetic, a prosthetic or something. That was his chest. He was very, very fit. Mm-hmm. And uh, now here, the interesting thing about Star Trek is. The TV series allowed Star Wars to be made. Star Wars allowed Star Trek the movie to be made. Oh, yeah. great point. And so here, I'm a kid coming off Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, all these action packs. Oh, space Battlestar Wars. Galactica. So oh. imagine sitting in the theater going, all right, we get finally getting a Star Trek movie. And it was one of the most boring movies I've ever seen. I'm like, where's the action? They redeemed themselves with Wrath of Khan. It had some awesome space battles. And it, it, it kicked off great. like a nice little trilogy because two connects to three, connects to four. And you, yeah, like when they come back, go back in time to the nineteen eighty, <laughs> to, to like to the twenty, like to the nineteen eighties, like San Francisco. I'm like, this is great. Oh, the save the whales. Yeah. Now I don't know if you guys have heard of this. <laughs> Most people agree that all the odd number Star Trek movies are trash, and the even number Star Trek movies are yeah. critically acclaimed. And I i don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I've tried watching some of the odd-numbered movies, and I'm like, oh, they're not that bad. But that's the general consensus is that the I mean, even ones are good, the odd ones are bad. I mean, Search for Spock has its point. You have Christopher Lloyd as a Klingon. I mean, that's just, <laughs> I mean, come, that's on. Right. <laughs> come on. Come on. they? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know. But then the cool thing was is after several uh, movies with the original cast, then Star Trek The Next Generation, which I absolutely loved. That was yeah, some of the best too. television. Oh. And so then they transitioned with First Contact, and and then we got to see, like, Picard and Kirk interact and stuff like that. So the transition from the original series to Next Generation in the films was just awesome. Really, I, try, really I cool. tried to ruin marriages and friendships by saying that they – for generations to have their movie, they still needed Kirk to come and hand them off. Their <laughs> I the agree time. with that. For some reason, there was like a lack of legitimacy for anything that came out that didn't recognize or pay some kind of homage or some kind of yeah. connection yeah. 
to Kirk and Nimoy and all that. And he still yeah. needed himself. Like, you need Kirk to do your little fist fight, huh, Picard? You wind up a little so and so. I don't know if he ever had a fist fight. Did Picard ever get into a fist fight? No, no. But he turned. They made him a badass in the, in the TV series. He got yeah. that Noskin blade cut stuff, and he's oh, laughing right. about him. Like, oh my god, man, you got gut, and you're like, like, where's that guy? Why does that guy need an old retired Jim Kirk to fight his battles against? You know, I mean, come on. Now, speaking he, of passing the baton. When they rebooted Star Trek with Chris Pine and those guys, they brought Nimoy back in to help pass the baton, yeah. and I thought that was pretty cool. That and was Zachary sort of... Quinto was his son, I think, or was it? His... Oh, well, Zachary no, Quinto that was, was him. That was Spock in like, the younger. alternate. It, it was uh, one of those yeah, yeah. those movies. Oh no, you're right. He was the younger version of the. It was yeah. movie etch a sketch. Like we need to. So I'm going to bring yeah. you in and create an alternate timeline. So not and that's what is they new. did. Yeah, they passed through that wormhole yeah. or whatever it was and yeah, said, it's... okay, we got a clean slate where anything can happen. Let a Nemo spot came to here yeah. and changed the whole where Kirk's dad, the way he died and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. like, we oh, get to start good. over. I'm like, you crafty little bastards. Yeah. All yeah, right. I don't know. Back to the Future was cool, like part one and part two. But when they went to part three, I think Doc Brown had to pull out a whiteboard and like actually diagram Explain, it. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I was waiting for that whiteboard <laughs> moment, and it never happened. Like, what are you guys talking right. about? But like uh, looking at the audience, yeah. what had yeah. happened was. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pause the story for a moment while we explain what the hell we're doing. I like that he was explaining that, but he treated Marty like he's a dumbass. He's like, Marty, we can't go back to the future because from here, this is what will happen. Like, oh, okay, yeah. all right. Now, speaking of the Star Trek reboot, I don't know about you guys. I absolutely loved it. I loved how Chris Pine sort of, emulated uh william shatner and had the move movements and mannerisms and the arrogance i thought he did a really nice job of catching the essence of shatner and uh, from what i heard i think there's at least one more star trek movie they're, they're, coming with yeah. that cast and then they're gonna have to look at rebooting it again i guess so this is gonna really surprise you nick but the only star trek movies oh, or here tv series i've here ever seen are the two uh, J.J. Abrams, and then, oh no! And then the third one was James Wan, right? But I've not seen an, a single episode of, you of any of the, me? and I've never seen any anyway, of the original. You've never movies. seen any of the which never. One? You've seen the you've seen the series though, right? Never. <laughs> I've I've only seen the two J.J. Abrams, and then number three, the number three reboot with Andrew, uh, directed by James Wan. That's all. That just oh, blows that's all my I'm mind. Wow. I liked them, Andrew. It's it, it's it's things like this that gets. Credibility destroyed. No, I'm well, kidding. Well, not, 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 <laughs> no, this is every episode. This I mean, is yeah, every episode. This is every, and not just that. I think this is not your stuff. Like this is how the citizenship test gets rewritten <laughs> in America. Like you are. Like they're going to start if putting aliens stuff come down. to the earth and all of a sudden live among us, and we need to test you to find out if you're a true U.S. citizen, <laughs> true American, and you fail that, we're gonna we're gonna roast you. It's That's like <laughs> who's on Mount Rushmore? Get that out of there. Have you seen Star Trek? When oh when uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was, like turned out to be Khan, I'm like, all right, that's cool. Who's Khan? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta ask. We have everybody. company here. We have company, and you do this. Right. You do this in front of company. I need a big lever here to the trap door that Andrew is sitting over. I, I that really about, shocks the heck. I want to talk about one thing and get your angle on this. I love what you just said, Joe. And that is, is you said Star Trek made it possible for Star Wars. For Star Wars, yeah. where do you, as a side note, where do you put two thousand one in there? Ooh. Well, two thousand one. It went for more of a realistic take on space. Like when you watch Star Wars, you hear lasers in space and, and spaceships banking on a turn. And, and it's aliens. like, and then you got Neil deGrasse Tyson having an aneurysm because <laughs> it's like, that's not the way space works. Um, so 2001 <laughs> took the more realistic approach. I think 2001 works as sort of a drama, uh, kind of a horror film sort of a thing. But as a kid growing up with Star, Star Wars and, and, and all this, when I saw 2001, I'm like, uh, this is this ain't Star Wars. So it's it's not. There's a lot of boring stuff. And yeah, a lot it's of really dry. Like, I mean, this is 1969. Yeah. Somebody was doing some serious LSD. Because yeah. Oh, oh and then the end. Yeah, yeah, the end is yeah, like, that, what is There's so is many going interpretations. It's, it's, yes. I'm, hoping, I'm hoping they got the murderous AI wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? It was weird, and I don't. I, I have to assume this was deliberate, but if any of you have ever seen Disney's take on Star Wars, they did the, the black, black hole. The black hole, which and was the great. black hole I love has it. the exact same ending as 2001 mm. with the psychedelic going into and 
into the, go black, into the hole black hole and people yeah. are getting stretched and it took the same out as 2001 like what is happening here and yeah so it stole a page from 2001 but i i personally love the black hole that, that was a that was a fun movie. i think it also led to um i mean look what else came out of that we got uh we got alien which is one of my very yes. all-time favorites yes mm-hmm. and that had more gravity to it but it was also the um and then if you look at Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park is basically an alien remake, yeah. but yeah, it, but on is, yeah. but at on a instead of in a spaceship, you're yeah. on on an island. Anyway, yeah, I, I think we talked as a generational thing. What Star Wars was when you all of you saw the that's uh, the Star Destroyer going overhead was for us when the dinosaur we first saw the dinosaur in Jurassic Park. It was like that <laughs> moment I was like dinosaurs are real. I knew yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, the part where Laura Dern and uh, Sam Neil Sam Neil. See they the, come over and she's got that fl- she's got that plant in her hand. And he, and she right, goes, right. This hasn't existed. <laughs> and he reaches his hand down exactly, yeah, like yeah, yeah, and he yeah. turns her head. And they cued with the John and you Williams don't see it. Yeah, yeah and they, 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 they cue exactly the music, and you don't see it. And you're like, what are they looking at? 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 And then you look at it and you go, and that's the first time you really see some really fantastic yeah. CGI. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's absolutely jaw dropping. And yeah. I, I, I. Almost peed my pants yeah. and cried at the same time. We've, we've, <laughs> we've talked about on the show before how well that CGI still holds up yeah. today. Right, right. It's amazing. 30, 31 years later, it yeah. still holds up excellent. Yeah. yeah. Because my brother took, because my brother saw Star Wars in the, in the theater, and he was like, you had to be there, boy. When oh, he, he calls I was. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk about a franchise that was inspired by a TV series that is probably the most lucrative franchise based on a TV series. Um, and again, it uh, this series was not on my radar when I was young. I didn't know a whole lot about it. I was aware of it, um, but I didn't know a lot about it. But there was a TV show on in the 60s called Mission Impossible. Yes. And years later, decades later, uh, they kind of take that title and – reboot it with uh tom cruise and i don't know what number mission impossible movie we're on it's got to be closing in on 10 i think um nine. i think dead Tunnel. reckoning one was number nine right? was it nine? all right okay. so that was split into two films yeah so the second one comes second out one. i think uh, in june right yeah yeah, yeah. now I, my recollection seeing the first mission impossible in theaters i i wasn't all that impressed i thought it was okay but, you know, I was getting the, the whole ripping the mask off to reveal that uh, this actor was wearing a mask the whole time. That got very tiresome quickly. And then I think it was Mission Impossible 2. I, like, hate it. Like, I'm like, this is this is bad. Everybody had a mask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is and, anybody and is they who they say they are? It was a trope. And But then they started getting better. And MI3 was better. And MI4 improved on that. And... And just the, the, the characters that form the team, I started to like all the actors and all the characters that form that team. Yeah. And then, you know, with each new movie that came out, they would be they made a point of making sure that the audience was aware that that indeed is Tom Cruise clinging to that plane or yeah. hanging off the side <laughs> of the building. His ankle. <laughs> so that when you're sitting in the theater, you're not dismissing it as CGI. You're like elbowing the person next to you. That's Tom Cruise up there. And his star power alone has made that franchise enormously successful and enormously entertaining. And I've loved the last seven or eight movies uh, in that franchise. Yeah. So I got to insert two seconds into here. If you if you compare the Mission Possibles with what the franchise of the, the James Bond was doing at that point, mm-hmm. I remember seeing the first Mission Impossible and thinking to myself, this is so much better than what James Bond had devolved to. Mm-hmm. This is pre Daniel Craig, which I think was a massive reboot. Don't get me right started right, on yeah, that. Yeah. That was right around Pierce Brosnan's Golden so that, Eye. Yeah, that would have yeah, been 90, Pierce, <laughs> 94, 95. Yeah, uh, 95 Golden was Golden Eye. Eye. Yeah. 96 was uh, Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys are into it anyway. I just remember yeah. I, I saw a, a James Bond where the, the, the villain is in outer space and he's he shoots a laser and it somehow creates a tidal wave and Pierce Brosnan rides Surfs a car yeah, yeah, door. Yeah. That was the last one he did. And I just about got up and walked out and thought, I, I hate this. I absolutely yeah. hate this. And I think the Broccoli's or whatever the family who owns the franchise, they this, I yeah. just, this is ridiculous. But I felt at that time that Mission Impossible, even though it's cheesy, you look back at it now, you kind of go, eh, 
that was still, in my opinion, much more ba- based in reality, minus yeah. the mask thing, yeah. which, which was kind of in, you know cheesy. But Yeah, there's still technology in the Mission Impossible movies that don't quite exist in real life. But uh, to, to elaborate on your point, movies yeah. like Mission Impossible, the Bourne Identity movies, and, yeah. and movies like that, even, I don't know if you guys remember Triple X with Vin Diesel. Yeah. Those movies basically were saying we're not your father's James Bond anymore, yeah. and I yes. think that was a kick in the pants to the yes. Bond franchise yes. to go the Daniel Craig route because these guys were doing things in movies that Bond should have been doing, but were getting really silly and cheesy. I think, and so that you could almost you say the it. Daniel Craig movies are like a reboot to, mm-hmm. to what 100% you're agree. to what you're saying. The Pierce Brosnan movie where he's riding the tidal wave that was. James Bond's Batman and Robin. <laughs> it really yes. was. It was a low was point. The, that was the like jump a, the shark. Uh, like, jump the shark. <laughs> die another day. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was die, die another. Two thousand two. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. seen that once, and I never want to revisit that yeah. again. Well, it did it. have. I'm going to defend yeah. the movie a little bit. It did have Halle Berry in it, who oh. I love, and Eye Candy. I, some people dismiss the invisible Aston Martin vanquish or vanish as they call it. But for me, Bond movies need the Bond girl, the Bond villain, the Bond henchman, and the Bond vehicle, the Bond car. And so I love the invisible vanquish, but a lot of people point to that as a moment where it's like, okay, this is getting a little ridiculous. Like, I mean, it was it was Fast and the Furious type crazy before Fast and the Furious had even come out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, right. We're flying cars in space. Like what? Yeah, yeah. And so now Fast and Furious, I think, is taking a page from the Mission Impossible movies and incorporating technology and cyber scamming and all this stuff. And you're like, I thought you guys were street racers yeah, just they, uh, 10 they, movies ago. Yeah, they've gone. So I don't even know what they're doing at this point. I'm like, all right. Make, they took a Fiero to space. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> a Fiero. A Pontiac Fiero. Yeah, they you're right. They space. I mean, how do you think Neil deGrasse Tyson is doing now? He's like, <laughs> what is happening right now? What is this? It's, it's visiting the one that Elon Musk showed shot into outer space right? yeah, he's a, shot a Tesla yeah, yeah out there. that one that's still floating around out there but yeah so the Mission Impossible movies have been enormously entertaining and the last one that I saw I I felt the last one was taking a page from the Fast and Furious movies which is hilarious because the Fast parachute. and Furious was kind of taking a page from Mission Impossible no Mission Impossible is taking a page from Fast and Furious but there's a scene and I, I don't consider this a spoiler or anything but there's a moving train uh the woman is in peril and Tom Cruise comes flying in through a window at the exact moment to take out the bad guy. And because I'm, he was parachuting down. Everything was fine up until that, yeah. when that happened. I'm like, what are we, come on, Tom. Yeah. I, uh, I pulled come a muscle on. when I rolled my eyes, uh, during that scene, I was, had to go see a specialist. Yeah. I did like um, a Top Gun Maverick. My eyes rolled all the way back and the came back forward. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> So, but yeah, no, you can't deny that the uh, Mission Impossible movies have been really entertaining, and I'll I'll be there for the that, next one to that, see how it all. That's a big concludes. ticket now because they yeah. know Tom's last movie is coming up because man's sixty and he can't. They were showing him running. He's doing a full Tom Cruise Mission Impossible run. They put that on Instagram. I'm like this man can't move, but I'm like, come on. At yeah. the end of it, he was going. I'm like, there it is, Tom. <laughs> no matter what Scientology says, that's age. It catches <laughs> us all, my friend. Yeah, Zenu cannot. I gotta stop say, that. I gotta say. It was very impressive to me. It gave me a lot of hope. As a 53-year-old male, I'm looking at him going, okay, if I, if I can yeah. get a personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there's can, one moment keep up. in this new one that uh, came out recently. There was one moment where he leaps from a cliff, and he's doing, like, free fall. And he's, he's talking, I think, in his, you know, earpiece or whatever. And his skin is flapping. And I, I forgot who this was. I thought, oh, it's pretty impressive CG. Then he, like, pulls the ripcord on his chute, launches away from the camera. And I'm like, oh, no, he really jumped off the side of this cliff. Yeah. And I had, I was I was embarrassed. Like, no, this is Tom Cruise. He doesn't do this CGI That's the motorcycle stuff. scene. Yeah. Where he, he, they did that scene six times, apparently. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you, risk, you risked a multi-hundred million dollar actor how many times? Yeah. And, and they, they, that's the first, get it right? That's the first scene of the movie because they, they said, you know, whatever happens to Tom, there's no movie after that. So we shoot that first and see if we're going to do a movie. <laughs> I heard and, that, yeah. And you watch the director age a decade each time he does yeah. it. Like the, he had, like, black hair, and he's like, oh, at the end of it. Like, well, say what you will about Tom Cruise. He puts butts in the seat. Oh, yeah. And he uh-huh. is one of the last great movies movie stars yep. he, that, that's their research yeah, what happens to the mission impossible franchise after him they're putting on that search now just like uh who's the kid who just got uh 
Aaron Johnson became the new Bond. Yeah, is that official? Wait, yeah, is that he's official? He's been offered the yeah. role from what I've oh. read. Oh yeah, he's, okay. he's been offered. He hasn't been. He, he has to accept. Yeah, that. but okay. he's more than I, likely going to be the next. James I Bond. really was hoping because for a, for a hot second there they had an African American or African Idris it was Idris, Idris Alba. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Henry. In the movie itself, oh. they had. Um, oh, the lady. Yeah, she the was, lady for a hot oh, second. Oh, she was yeah. like 006 or something. I thought like she was 007. Oh, anyway, I thought she would have been a very interesting character. I thought that yeah. would have been a lot of fun. Um, but I did like the idea of Idris Elba. They just wait. They just waited too long, I think. Yeah. They waited, and then, yeah. uh, then what happened was the Warner Brothers DC fell apart, and then they're like, Henry Cavill's going to be James Bond. And they're like, oh, somebody else got him. Yeah. Yep. Speaking of Henry Cavill, uh, since we're on the topic of TV shows and movies, I'm really disappointed that the movie that he did, The Man from Uncle, didn't turn into a franchise. I really that was a good movie. Enjoyed the Man from yeah. Uncle. It was a I classic. TV actually, series. saw that movie. Yeah, but only you know. because uh, I had to see Alicia Vikander. Oh, she was. Beautiful. Okay, I, yeah. I, I, I had to see her. I, I so. don't know why that wasn't franchised. I don't know if it just would so, a disappointment it was, at the box it office. It was him and uh, Army, Army Hammer Ham. and yeah. her. Yeah. And I well, thought yeah, Army Hammer didn't help matters at all. No, he did not. Yeah. yeah. I think she had a piece of her ear missing uh, after one scene <laughs> with her, with them. Anyway, uh, we won't go into that. But uh, yeah. wow! But I actually, I thought it was a decent movie. That came out what 2015, 2016, yeah, something and, like and that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Even was, I didn't even care for, you know, for the reason. I'm glad you just saw it in the theater. I don't care if it was at gunpoint or. You I, oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't see it in theater. I I I, I rented it. Oh, that's fine. That's you know okay. But no, I, I, A minus. It's, it's fine. I that was uh, like Guy, Guy Ritchie, right? Yeah. I think so. And I'm yeah. not usually a big Guy Ritchie fan, but I I enjoyed that movie. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll ever see that get rebooted or remade, but I was disappointed that didn't get any sequels. Um, another movie I want to bring up, and this is this is probably going in the opposite direction, but I remember when the announcement was made for the Brady Bunch movie, I was I was like angry. I was like, oh, don't touch the Brady Bunch. Um, but then I saw it in theaters and was pleasantly surprised because it wasn't necessarily like a true reboot or anything like that. They weren't trying to recast these characters in new situations. It was a loving parody that poked yeah. fun at the Bradys in yeah. the real world. Yeah. So here's this fictional TV family living in a real world. And I was pleasantly surprised with the Brady Bunch movie. They brought back Davy Jones for a cameo. And it, it because whoever made that movie treated it with, you know, kid gloves, with just this loving respect for the Brady Bunch, it made that movie work. But then they went and did a sequel that I just hated. They had Greg and and uh, and uh, Marsha kissing in the <laughs> sequel, where I I l yelled out loud in the theater, "No!" Um, so the the sequels were pretty awful, but uh, that that reboot or whatever you want to call it was a, a loving parody, and re really really enjoyed it. I thought everyone knocked it out of the park. They should have had. Uh Greg and the mom make out just like in real life. Right? Well, in real life, yeah, he had a crush on Mrs. Brady. Right, yeah. right, right. Who so. didn't? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, I, I feel like when it came when it came to TV shows that that got turned into movies, comedy really took it in the face because we were talking about yes. you know, yep. you know, Mikhail's Navy, Sergeant Bilko. Uh, you know, it's it's just it didn't it didn't Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch. A lot of the Saturday Night Live reboot. Dukes of Hazard. Ah, du oh, Dukes of Hazard. Well, that, that that might be a good segue to talk about some of the worst ones. Yeah. Um, the, the Dukes of Hazard was an unnecessary reboot with uh, Johnny Knoxville in the lead role. Yep, and yep. I'm like, why was he given the reins of this this beloved you know series? And I hated it. I saw it in the theaters, but I hated yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't. Um, I was I was like. I don't know, seventeen or eighteen when it came out, and would have been like the prime demographic Target, for yeah. it. And yeah. yeah, and I was even I was like, oh, this this was bad. Yeah, I, I, why did I spend eight dollars to watch this in the I, it's Something somehow it it always seems to me on a movie like that that you know what the conversation was two years prior to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's brand recognition here. We got to cobble something together because I yeah. know that if we throw that up on a on a on a poster. If we if we have you know a girl with big boobs and and we have some car, fast cars going back and forth, we're guaranteed to make minimum of fifty million, no matter yeah. what 
no matter what the script is, no matter what we do with it. Plus, and t- that's that's the hijacking of the American people, and yeah. I just I hate yeah. that. Johnny Knoxville's hot coming off a of, uh, jackass. And yeah, yeah. So sure. And uh, I don't know if you remember this. Burt Reynolds was cast as Boss Hog yeah. in yeah, the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, what a what a disaster! And I, they should have just left well enough alone. I mean, there was like in the nineties too, nineties to early two th- mid two thousand. That that decade, it was like yeah, the Mod Squad, yeah, the Avengers. You well, had- yeah, here's a, here's a, a list of some of the movies. Now, maybe you guys liked them better than I did, but uh, I did not care for the A Team. Uh, yeah, no, a big did- one thing they did in the A Team reboot with Liam Neeson is. They took a character from that show and destroyed it, and that was the van. The 18 <laughs> van is one of the most yes. iconic vehicles in TV history. Yeah. And within 15 minutes or so of the movie, they destroyed it. And I thought, well, that'll give them an opportunity to maybe reveal a new van somewhere during the movie. And they did not. And, and they, I'm like, and, and they took out Baracus. It's a character. They, they took out BA in the entire movie. Like he yeah. became this weird pacifist for some reason that doesn't <laughs> want to do anything. And the last five minutes, he's like, now nah, I'm going to fight. I'm like, okay, well. Yeah. You're here as, what else were you there for? Like you were the yeah. muscle. You're like you were the intimidator. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you were the engineer. Like, yeah, I didn't like the tone it. of the movie. It was a big middle finger to fans of the series. Yeah. Uh, another movie I I did not care for was Beverly Hillbillies. Oh. Uh, you had uh, Jim I never Varney saw as uh, I never saw Uncle Jed. Yeah. That was a disaster. Yeah, no. Um, one movie that's widely regarded as one of the worst movies ever made was Bewitched. Yes. which was Will, Will Ferrell, Ferrell and, and Nicole, uh, Nicole Kidman, Kidman. Oh. Uh, in yeah, the roles of they, Samantha they, and Darren the story, Stevens. No chemistry there, for, for, for starters. And someone yeah. said, we'll, we'll try to get men of it, like, he's playing Darren. <laughs> That's Will Ferrell is playing Darren in a TV show about this thing. I'm like, what? Yeah. How, that got out of the pitch. And Will yeah. Ferrell, he's had his moments where he has, like, two of the probably in the top ten worst comedies, Land yeah. of the Lost. Yeah, that was on my list yeah. too. Like, yeah. I was a big fan of the show. Now, obviously, watching it as an adult, it, the effects were just awful. But growing up, I loved Land of the Lost, and so then they're like, "Oh, we're going to do a, a new reboot of Land of the Lost," and it was oh. terrible, just terrible. And it's like, how do you get dinosaurs wrong? How do you screw up dinosaurs? Well, they that's good. It's a bad script and bad story, and like a lot of people yeah. putting their fingers in it. That, he he had another one. He, him and he had the Sherlock Holmes thing with uh, what's his face. Yeah, well, uh, John C. Riley. John C. Riley, yeah. 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 Holmes and Watson that I think, people hated. I think that was, that's rocking a hot 14% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> like he yeah, had, nobody he, saw that movie. He wow. had a stretch where this was, you know, he'd had old school, semi-pro, you know, Ron Burgundy. You know, he had Anchorman. Yeah, so he, right. was, he was on like a Those are some good ones, yeah. Elf, yeah. For right. Farrell. And then also oh, he yeah. hits this oh. run. I'm like, oh, my God, you're <laughs> on like an M. Night Shyamalan tailspin, man. You got to pull out. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Now here's one I'm 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 surprised if any of you remember this movie at all but do you recall that there was a theatrical reboot of the Lost in Space TV series. Yep. You guys remember this at all? I do now. Thank when you for you undoing say, the years of when therapy. You say, <laughs> yeah, when you say a theatrical reboot, meaning yep. it was live or No, no, no. No, it was a a movie theater movie release called Lost in Space. That was based on the old TV series from the '60s, and not a lot of people remember this movie today. Um, Matt LeBlanc was in it. I think he played uh, Major West in it. Yep. I I can barely remember the other yeah, I don't remember actors it. that were in it. I think. Oh, what's why am I drawing a blank? Uh, he's an acclaimed actor. He was he played uh, the the villain, I guess, in in the show. They retooled the robot and everything, and it was pretty much instantly forgettable. And it's it's a sound concept. I mean, you know, Lost in Space was doing its thing before Star Trek, if you can believe yeah, it. Yeah. Lost in Space was on TV before Star Trek. And the idea of being flung out into space and, uh, and uh, running into new species and planets and everything, you know, that was borrowed heavily later on Voyager, Star Trek Voyager. Um, it's a sound concept, so I don't know why they botched it so badly. But I tried to invent a yeah. Men in Black neuralizer to forget that. No, you <laughs> just single-handedly started to undo a lot of the stuff. Thank you, John. But, yeah, <laughs> Lost in Space. Uh, another one, The Flintstones. Oh. You, 
I I wanted to love the Flintstones, but I, I, it's just again that, John that, Goodman that, that was capitalized on brand recognition. John Goodman yeah. and, and uh, I love John Goodman. And how did he how did he fall apart? I mean, just it felt. I, I don't think it was his fault. I just think that somebody. Yeah, I thought he played together. a great Rick, Fred Flintstone. Rick Moranis right. as Barney. Yeah, and yeah. Had a, um, hey, Fred. Yeah, Rosie O'Donnell oh, as Betty right. White. That Betty was a that was a strange. Betty, yes, Betty White. Was, yeah. yeah. No, was, Betty Betty Rubble. Betty yeah, Rubble, yeah. Right. <laughs> that was a Betty strange White. casting. Yeah. Kyle choice. McLaughlin was in it, coming hot off some some yeah. uh, David Lynch movies. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I think even Elizabeth Taylor was in it. She was like yes. Wilma's mother or something. Um, but yeah, it, it just wasn't all that memorable, and it sort of came yeah. and went. And it I think made there enough box something... office to justify a horrible sequel. Yeah, yeah. That band like Viva Rock stick. Vegas. Oh, jeez, oh. yeah. I yeah. did not see that, and even as a kid, I was like, nope, it's stupid. <laughs> if you didn't see it, why do you have to remind the rest of us about the title? We're trying to forget it in here. Hey, Viva Rock Vegas. Look, there it is. Yeah. There's the th- there are the nightmares. Now, I'm going to throw out one more title, and I know you guys are going to give me blank stares on this one. What is your reaction when I give you the title "The Nude Bomb"? The Nude Bomb. Is that another Leslie Nielsen? No, no, that was the no. I, the I, I am thankfully in the in the dark on that's this. That's the porn parody of <laughs> Doctor Strange Love. Right? <laughs> no, that might be a better movie. <laughs> I no. was going to go with that. Yeah. I was, uh, the Nude Bomb, if you can believe it. And I saw this in theaters when it came out. Was the movie release based on the TV series Get Smart? Whoa. Starring oh. Don Adams, he returned to play the role of Maxwell Smart. Whoa, whoa! And it was a box office disaster. It was about a villain who created a bomb that made people's clothes disappear. <laughs> and uh, this got and out of a room. It got made. This went into yeah. production. Yeah. That's... Now they did reboot it years <laughs> later with Steve Carell, right. and that was one and done. That had Anne Hathaway in it. Steve Carell, Get Smart. That wasn't bad. I actually kind of liked that. I didn't think it was it, terrible. It could but have gone someplace. I think. Yeah. It could have been the Inspector Gadget with Matthew Broderick. I'm like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? No, stop. <laughs> I that just was a weird take that on that. Yeah. Inspector Gadget and Get Smart are two different movies. Or two different concepts. Yeah, but it's but it's, yeah, Don, me. but it's Don yeah. Adams doing the voice of Inspector Gadget, is it not? You're right. Yeah, there is that connection. Yes. So there's that go, connection. Go, Gadget. Right. Yeah, that was yeah, that was Don Adams. Wow. I loved Inspector point, Gadget. Yeah, the cartoon was fantastic. I love this cartoon. Yeah. I did I did watch Inspector Gadget. I, I the cartoon. Yeah. I did like that as a kid. Oh, that's yeah, bad. that's consistent. Now, did you I, see the live action? No. I didn't. Oh yeah, I I don't know if I've ever saw it, but I had no interest. No, in I did, that. and I, I you know that's fine. You know, between the two of us, you know, you, you take most of the hits, and I'll 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 take I'll take, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take some of the crap stuff that you miss. I'm like, oh, I saw Inspector Gadget in the theater. I'm like, oh, this 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 is a swift kick to family jewels. <laughs> now, <laughs> go 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 nut punch. <laughs> now, since we're talking about TV shows and movies. I want to bring up this uh, subgenre of movies based on SNL characters and skits. Oh boy! This is a very hit and miss. I, I have subgenre. those printed out because I was thinking the same thing. There my you friend. go. That's, yeah. This is Lauren Michaels' fault. This is his revenge for something that was done to him. Yeah. <laughs> now there are some great movies to come out of it. One yes. of my all-time 100 favorite movie list. Has, I, I can say it. I know what it what is. What is it? The Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers. Oh, I thought you were going to say it's Pat. No. <laughs> oh. I don't know if I've ever said it. <laughs> zero. Am zero right? percent Blues of Brothers. Blues Brothers is yeah. one of my all time favorite movies. And so and well. I don't yeah. even know if you can say it's based on an SNL skit because really it was just these guys performing on stage as the musical It guy. counts. Don't take um, that away from them. Yeah. Too, they need but all the wins they can that get. That was enormously entertaining. Uh, Wayne's World is right yes. up there. Yeah, uh, Wayne's now, World's that's great. actually based on a sketch. And. You know, working in the field of public access television my whole life, to see a movie about public access television in Wayne's World uh, was just made, you know, made me smile. Yep. Now, I, I rewatched Wayne's World recently, and I, I don't think it holds up as well as it did when it first came out, but it's still a, a pretty entertaining movie. But, uh, you know, Michael Myers just sort of winking and, and mugging for the camera, like it, 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 it gets old quickly but yeah, yeah. but that was one of the biggest movies to come out of an snl sketch i can remember um, really liking it though at the time i yeah, can remember yeah. oh, really liking mike yeah. myers it was pre shrek it was pre maybe i think yeah. it was pre pre austin, I, pre austin, austin powers yeah. austin powers and, oh yeah and you, and you kind of did crave at least i did i, I craved more mike myers like oh, wow I this agree. guy's really fun he should and so to have him break out was kind of like well this is novel this yeah. is interesting 
So I think there was that going for it. But if you look back at it now, a lot of the a lot of the jokes are are you know, fourth grader kind of jokes. Yeah, and yeah. And, just, and they, they were just, they're, they're kind of stuck at that time. They're stuck in 1991. Or that's yeah, a whatever. good yeah. point, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and I want to like, love those, but it's too yeah. bad they didn't have a few in there that were more, yeah. a little bit more cerebral yeah. to yeah. kind of hold up. But they yeah, and it, it's they seem so desperate to try and make certain catchphrases catch on, like, you know, swing and all that stuff. Like, when you watch the movie, it seems so desperate, like, they're throwing all these out there going, some of these got to catch up. Ba- Abraham so, Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it was it, that. <laughs> it was a bit of a time capsule, you know, when it came out. And it was a huge phenomenon. And um, But, yeah, uh, you know, I was just recently revising my 100 favorite movie list. And when I rewatched Wayne's World, I'm like, okay, that can come off. Um, what, other, what other movies based on SNL characters would you praise or uh, trash? Oh, go for it, Andrew. Okay. Okay. Most, of them, I, now most I had, of them are trash. I've honestly uh, probably only seen half of them. That's, but that, that's par for the course. It's it's okay. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed, and I think it deserves better than its Rotten Tomatoes score it was uh, MacGruber. I thought that was hilarious. I saw MacGruber in the theater, and I liked certain aspects of it. But it lost me when he stuck like a celery stalk in his butt <laughs> yeah. and was walking around with his pants around his ankles. I'm like, all right, this is juvenile all of a sudden. So yeah. there, there are elements of it I, I there, like. There are but... there probably a good 15% of the movie I would personally change myself and, yeah, yeah. and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I wouldn't do this. But I didn't know if you knew this, but I think it was on Peacock maybe two or three years ago. They did a, a TV series. Oh, I didn't And they know brought that. back um, his sidekick, uh, Ryan Phillip, mm-hmm. and um, and it was it was actually really good. Yeah, in my opinion, I huh. I liked it. Um, but the, the the two Wayne's worlds I really liked. Um, it's Pat. I mean, like I said, it I it, never it, saw it, it. It literally has a zero on Rotten Tomatoes. Right, it's one of those movies, those really messed up movies. My sister and I watched when we were probably way too young to have watched it. And it had a budget of eight million dollars. Nick, can you read what it took in? Well, unfortunately, that's a comma, not a decimal point. It sixty thousand eight hundred. It brought in sixty thousand dollars on eight million. <laughs> wow. Oh was this a producer's moment where they were trying like a tax scam? Where they're trying to get oh, a yeah. and tax write off? Way, right off. way oh. too much coke in the in the well, on, no, uh, on floor eight uh, H in the Rockefeller de- Center. It was definitely a tax write off, and then there are a couple of bodies buried in the Nevada desert. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> now, did that. did any of you guys see the Blues Brothers the sequel with? Yeah, uh, that was I, no, I no, that was that was a slap in the face. After well, Belushi, we yeah. lost Belushi. Yeah, yeah. I, you know I, the Blues Brothers should have died with him and. It was a cash grab to try and bring that back. It, it was, was a how, cash yeah. grab. That's what I thought. I didn't see it, but that's how it kind of came across. I, yeah. I'd forgotten some of these movies, but now I know. at Andrew's list, it's, oh, my God. Stuart Saves His Family. with um, Never saw that uh, one. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the, the guy who was a politician. Al, Al Franken. Uh, Al yeah. Franken, Which yeah, yeah. I honestly don't even remember the sketches, yeah. barely. Well, there was. He did have the classic sketch where he was talking to Michael Jordan. You ever see that yeah. sketch? Yeah. And he's he's like, we'll call you Michael J to protect your anonymity. And he goes, I know, Michael, that there are some times where you feel like you're no good and you can't shoot the ball into the basket. You ever feel like that? And he's like, no, not really. <laughs> so he was funny on the show. Like, I thought Pat was funny on the show. Yes. But anyone who said, can we get a 90-minute movie out of these characters? And there's way too many green lights on that. I mean, there's. Yeah. I saw. I was looking at Andrew's list, yeah. and, yeah, I mean, Coneheads. A Night at the Roxbury. Night at the Roxbury. Now, I, I saw A Night at the Roxbury in the theater, and – I remember being entertained by it. Okay. I think I don't think I've ever seen it since. I did see it in the theater that one time, but it wasn't horrible. And then two back-to-back ones, Superstar and Ladies Man. Ah, uh, Superstar I think was terrible. I didn't, I didn't I'm trying to remember if I saw Ladies Man. I I might be Molly Shannon Superstar and then Ladies yeah. Man Tim Meadows. It's just Ladies Man rocking a hot 11% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. <laughs> if if you I'll, I'll go around the table here. If you had the green light power I, to I, green light an snl character mine. sketch who would you green light today I know mine. today oh my god this is i mean they haven't really seen a lot the, the two that come to mind and i don't want to because i already know when they do the repeat of these sketches it fails 
uh, Kate McKinnon when she's the lady that's kidnapped by aliens. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Imagine seeing that whole thing played out, the abduction. Yeah, and that might. That would be the, interesting. That and then um, uh, Keenan, uh, uh, Keenan playing um, What's Up With That. Really? Oh, yeah. You would yeah. turn that into a movie? I don't know. That's Where he'd have so his own, like, TV show? TV show. And he's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and he's bringing people What's back. and that? Yeah. Mind? <laughs> And I and I I've seriously thought about could I write a ninety minute version of this, Stefan? You were reading my mind, yeah. Stefan. Yeah, yeah. He because wow. remember they towards the end of Bill Hader's ter- time there they did an extended uh, pre- yeah about him getting married. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he gets married to Anderson Cooper. <laughs> and uh, Seth breaks it up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rubens is is in that uh, yeah. as Pee Wee. And when I saw that, I'm like. Could they could they do a ninety minute? I mean, I, I don't know if it'd be great, but it would be hilarious. Yeah, if you brought in John Mulaney to to write it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, it'd be interesting. Would, if, can you turn that into a ninety minute film? I will say where that it's just him going to different weird messed up clubs around New York. City yeah, yeah. On the lower lower east side of Manhattan. <laughs> That's wonderful. I know you know, you're just pitching the movie right now. It's going to be in yeah. someone's hopefully. So oh, dude, like, I've got the Alexa. Thing. Alexa and I have pitched this movie to each other 20 times <laughs> <laughs> and i can see the trailer for it this movie has everything <laughs> george is, can you think of an snl i can think of two of them but worthy of but, a film? but they're but the but the stars are both dead one's phil hartman unfrozen caveman lawyer yeah oh, that was would have been, in my opinion could have been good and the other yeah. one was chris farley as the motivational speaker oh yeah oh. god that would have been so funny oh my god where, where he would be down by the river. <laughs> Chris Farley would go around to like mid-sized uh, city, uh, uh, air, like uh, airport hotels, like in like Cedar Rapids, Iowa, just giving That's these right. motivational speeches with people walking in with '70s yeah. leisure suits on, and like yes. you know, I think both of those could have been funny. But um, I mean, there's a lot of skits that have a lot of really good, really good ideas. But the problem is, is that uh, I don't think like when you watch them. I think the nature of SNL is that they come up with an idea, they get the they get the host of the, of the show up to speed, and then they dump it out, and it's almost like you ate too much too fast, and you're just vomiting it out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They don't really realize a lot of those things fully, and a lot of times I think you miss some of the nuances. And I don't I don't know if fleshing it out is the right term, but some of these I don't think were ever fleshed out. Really, to the point, like, like I, I think, like as as compared to something like The Simpsons, which is kind of along the same kind of gaggy humor, right? Y- you you have something that's a much longer time period. They they come up with the ideas, then they start. You can still change things. You can still refine things. It's like the early Toy Story. Plus, you know, where it took a longer time. Plus, with The Simpsons compared to SNL, you have an established world and you have established characters. That's a very good point. Whereas in SNL, yeah, the the writing for each week starts at like eleven o'clock on a Tuesday night. Everyone's doing coke, and then they, they <laughs> yeah. have to have it out by like, like by rehearsals by Friday. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. By dress, I think dress or either Friday night or Saturday like afternoon. So they, the turnaround time on that's and it's all ripped from the headlines most of the time, and it's I mean, it's hard to make something worthwhile. There was a rumor. Was, I almost wish that yeah. they did like it had the cast cast A and B where you could go at least two weeks and really. Have three, four days to flesh it out or I, something. I think yeah. they might do that on certain sketches. I think you're right. Where yeah. where some writers will have some sketches tucked away. Yeah. And then and over the course of maybe a couple months, they'll say, "Hey, Lauren, can you take a, a a third look at this?" And he'll say, or not not even necessarily Lauren, whoever the the head writer is at that time, back in the days, uh, yeah. Seth Meyers, and then they'll put together a really right. good sketch. That's how or why on that show. Only one out of every three or one out of every four sketches are actually funny, to be well, honest. You know what's interesting? If not, yeah, sometimes yeah. I've watched a whole Saturday Night Live oh, yeah. and just said, there's there's nothing redeemable. I got a couple giggles here, but it's yep. mostly just garbage. Yeah, you just you know, the, wait until Weekend Update comes up and you're hoping that yeah. will at least will redeem something. Yeah, that Weekend Update yeah. is some, sometimes the funniest yeah. part. Go ahead. Yep. Yeah, the, the, the funniest, most memorable sketches, I think, are ones they didn't expect to blow up. You know, I've heard stories where they say they they get together in the writers room, someone would pitch an idea and all the writers are falling over laughing and they they put the sketch together and then they do what they translate. call the dress rehearsal yeah. in front of a live audience and it tanks yeah. uh. and there's crickets and they're like why is this not working and it gets pulled. But then 
you know, the last half hour of SNL is always sort of this dumping ground. And that's where some of the gems are found where they think, oh, this isn't going to work. Like, you know, take Cowbell. Like who would have yeah. ever predicted that Cowbell would have gotten as huge as it did. And I remember seeing some of those sketches live as they aired and like falling over, laughing, tears in my eyes. And but, yeah. so you can't predict which ones are going to blow up. But in that one, it's Christopher Walken that sells that. Yeah. yeah, he I gotta, does. I gotta have he's a great at everything. I got a yeah, fever, yeah. <laughs> and the prescription is more cow. <laughs> and that's what's that's what sells takes that sketch over the top because it, otherwise it's just Will Ferrell being, which is funny. Will Ferrell is he's bothering all the people, banging this cowboy, but the guy yeah. is like, fellas, I really think. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got a fever. I think there's also yeah. Will Ferrell's gut, which I think is also yeah. kind of another yeah. character. Yeah. It's not too small. Yeah. It's, it's yes. hypnotic kind of thing. There was a rumor that uh, with certain characters, like Opera Man, they were thinking, could we do this? Like, there's no way you can make no. a 90 minute out of that one. And Cantina Boy. Oh, Canteen Boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That one was pretty controversial. Yeah, that's not why they were like, Ooh, we're not For me, this. what was that? What was Canteen Boy? Canteen Boy. That was Adam Sandler and uh, Alec Baldwin the Boy doing Scouts some were... inappropriate <laughs> Boy Scout humor. Adam, yeah. A, 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 oh, yeah, Adam, yeah, I don't know about that. Alec, yeah. ba Alec, Baldwin, Alec Baldwin was the, the scout master, like, oh, Canteen Boy. And yeah. it's, it's, it's Adam Sandler just having that weird smile on his face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just cuddle up near me. Look at the stars. And he's like, Yes, this is really it is no. Really, you, you can't go with that. No, yeah. no now one of one of my favorite recurring sketches, and I don't know if this can be stretched out into a film. I would I would pay money to see it. But one of my favorite sketches over the last couple decades is the Californians. Yes. I love the Californians. Have you yes. seen the Californians? With, uh, Fred Armisen. Yes. No, I haven't. So it's, it's a bunch of guys, you know, guys and girls with blonde hair, all typical Californians. And the bulk of their conversation is directions. Like, I just took the uh, the 10 to the, uh, you know, the, oh, one, the no. 101. The and if you get off at Mulholland, take a left turn at the Jack in the Box. That's like most but of the dialogue. Then I got stuck in Marina Del Rey. <laughs> and, and it's, it's, it's almost it's Long really, Beach, man. Yeah, it's really funny. It's a parody on, on, on a daytime soap opera, but all yeah. their dialogue is based on, like, you you know, why don't you get out of here and take the 401 <laughs> down to Mala Vista and, and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, if you're not from L.A. or that southern part, you wouldn't. But you just realize, okay, these are all directions. It'd be like, you know, you get off at I-75 and, you know, head down to Woodward, and then why don't you get off at 8 Mile? Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So would it translate to a 90-minute film? I don't know, but I would sit there and watch it if they did, like, a cheesy drama soap opera style with terrible dialogue. The most entertaining to think of it, they did the Coneheads, which yeah. didn't pop oh, up on right. our list. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, that Coneheads. didn't do too did well Did that either. pop up on your list? Pardon me, I, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, no. At, at, you know, what's interesting is, there are actors who were on SNL who did movies that if you didn't know better, you'd think they originated as an SNL sketch. And Austin Powers is a perfect example. Like when, when people saw Austin Powers, they're like, I don't remember this on SNL. It's like, cause it wasn't on yeah. SNL. Yeah. It was a routine that he did with his wife. Like he would bounce around on the bed and strike poses. And you know, do I make you horny? And she was like, that might, might make a good character. But you would think that had roots in SNL, but it didn't. But to be fair, uh, his impression of uh, Dr. Evil is of Lauren Michaels. You're right. So. Yeah, yeah. That is, <laughs> it is? Yeah, that's him impressionating Lauren yeah, Michaels. He talks Michael. just like Shocked. Just yeah, like yeah. Him, yeah. If you ever get a chance to yeah. uh, YouTube it, it's Bill Hader impersonating, talking to Conan O'Brien about times he'd have, uh, he'd do a, a funny thing with uh, with Lauren, where he basically says, he imitates Lauren having Famous, you know, dinners with like serial killers, and, and it's great. And 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 and, and date Bill Hader nails the impersonation every time. Yeah. <laughs> now, one thing, since we're on the topic, one thing that shocks the heck out of me is there's one uh, performer, SNL performer, that comes to mind, who was so great on SNL. In my opinion, one of the greatest SNL performers of all time, who could not parlay that into a successful film career, and that is Dana Carvey. Oh, yeah. Dana Carvey did the Master of Disguise, which oh, was yeah. a box turtle, office turtle disaster. Turtle was a disaster. He just didn't get Why it. Why can't Dana Carvey find that vehicle that turned so many people before him into I, stars? Was he the one who got the bee sting in his face, turned big in the helicopter movie? I can't remember. He did a movie where he gets stung in the, and his face turns huge. <laughs> and it's kind of a, it's, it's funny for about two seconds, and yeah. then there's nothing behind that. Yeah. 
I'll never understand why I think, Dana I think, Carvey has done Because I think he it. got typecasted as a sidekick to Mike Myers with Wayne's World oh, early on. I think that's what wow, happened. good insight. Yeah. Very early, right. because then when they were all trying to branch out, he got lumped in with Mike Myers, and then Mike Myers yeah. was able to branch out to do Austin Powers before. But Church Lady. I mean, yeah. Church that, Lady was classic. Been, yeah, he his, had. His Johnny Carson, yep. Casey Kasem. That or you blame his reps for not finding the right script. Yeah. Maybe they're getting too selective. I don't know, Fire your agent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, everyone was able to parlay that, and you know, Chevy Chase did you know, not has, only Caddyshack but like yeah. Fletch and Vacation movies and all that. Why didn't Dana Carvey take that similar career path? I'll never understand that. He's I, so talented, and maybe he he, maybe so. he should turn to Dan Aykroyd because Dan Aykroyd, you know, you know, was better at writing. He always enjoyed mm. writing instead of acting. Yes. That's where you turn to, like Dan, you got something <clears throat> for me? Can you? Yeah, make me a Ghostbuster, yeah, please, or something. Along yeah. With, yeah, but Dana Carvey, I my theory was that bad representation and. Yeah. Just got kind of typecast as Wayne's Worlds. You know. I mean, even David Spade had a couple of gems. He was in Tommy Boy, which is one of my all time favorite comedies. And he, he I he didn't was the care for but he liked, uh, there were a lot of people who liked Joe Dirt. He was in Joe Dirt. So if if David Spade can get a movie career but based he, on he his went SNL. TV early, I think he went TV because we realized without, without, yeah. without Chris. Without when Chris when Chris Farley passed away because they were doing they, they were did three great. movies together yeah, they did, yeah. Two Black movies. Sheep really, really yeah, yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. he, and then he's gone and, and then he tries to do Joe Durden like oh I don't know if you can do this solo, buddy. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. if you can carry if you can carry a vehicle on your own and he yeah. goes to TV and he stands out as a supporting character he's you know he stands out when he he doesn't have to carry a show you're like okay you're yeah right. yeah he, I call the Orlando Bloom syndrome. Yeah. <laughs> like, Legolas, you're going to be awesome. Like, can you carry Troy? <laughs> can I carry Troy? Oh, no, you can't do this. Uh, we got about 10 minutes left. Uh, something we hadn't scratched the surface on yet is the opposite of movies based on TV shows, and that's TV shows based on movies. Uh, for me, obviously, the gold standard is MASH. Uh, the movie was outstanding, which uh, helped. Um, but somehow they recast most of those characters for the TV series, and it went on to run to a longer run than the actual Korean War. And uh, Alec Baldwin, or Alec Baldwin, um, uh, Alan Alda, Alan 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 Alan. Yeah. yeah, he was just great in it. And even when they lost cast members on MASH, they replaced them with people who Fantastic. came yeah. on and, and held their own. And um, I think Radar is one of the only characters that appeared in both the movie and the TV series. There, there might have been another yeah. character. Was that was um, Father Mulhay? Well, was my father McKay? Was he in both, or is that I don't somebody else? know if he was in the movie or not, but. Like I said, that's the gold standard. That was just one of the greatest sitcoms of all time. Uh, but I did love, was it Elliot Gould and Donald Sutherland? Yeah, they were. Yeah. God, they had there. great chemistry in the movie. Yeah. You, you, I wanted, you know, I, I wasn't alive at the time or I wasn't old enough to know, but it would have been great to have, to have them, uh, it would have been great to have them reprise their roles because it, yeah. they kind of set the standard and these other guys were following in their wake. Now, they but, did make it their own. Yeah, but these were movie stars, so I would imagine when someone said, "Oh, you want to do this as a TV series?" It would have back been a lot then. Movie to they TV. didn't think job security. They thought TV is beneath us, so they yeah. had to recast. Yeah, those that's a good point. Um, now, some other uh, TV shows uh, based on movies that immediately come to mind. Uh, for me, the first two seasons of Westworld, which yeah. was an HBO series, that was based on the old western uh, with Yul Brynner. Yeah. Um, and I thought the first two seasons of Westworld were as good as TV gets. I didn't never watch the third season when they sort of broke out of Westworld. Um, I may have to revisit that at some point. Uh, Fargo comes to mind. Yep. Great, wow. great movie that uh, spawned a, a beloved TV show. And wow. one that has a huge, huge following is Buffy the Vampire yes. Slayer. Uh, Christy Swanson played Buffy in the film. Yep. With and it was largely forgettable. I mean, it, it, there's people who, you know, watched it or liked it, but the series transcended. I mean, it eclipsed Buffy the Vampire Slayer. People love the TV series. and got uh, spinoffs with Angel. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and yeah, Spike, yeah. too. Did Spike get his own TV show for a bit? No. Uh, <laughs> was it really that good? It. The TV People series? People loved the TV series. Wow. Wasn't I mean, that, I see it. Was, I see the Planet Fitness. That was Joss, Joss Whedon did yeah. the yeah. series, yeah. right? Yeah. And one of the more beloved episodes, they did an, an entire musical episode, and people oh, yeah. just friggin' loved it. So I never really got into Buffy, but I respect the, uh, the popularity of it, that people, this is a TV series that was actually better than the movie, which is yeah. very, very rare. 
Can you guys think of any other TV shows that spawned from movies that really stand out? I'm just now starting to get into this because I'm 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 glad because I could wait at Cobra Kai because it was Karate oh, Kid. Yeah. Now Cobra Kai is, uh, is the TV series on Netflix. Yeah. So uh, it took me a while. I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go back and see this. And then I'm I'm on season one right now. I'm like, okay, this is entertaining. I I can see why this is going to be. I hear a lot of people really like it. Like yeah. families watch it because it's family entertainment. It's PG thirteen ish. Yeah. But they, the, the antagonist Johnny, like he's you, kind of like, oh my god, we could dive into this character. I'm like, oh okay, you're not as big of a a hole as I was going to label you as. But you know, that, and then the other one that comes to mind is um, I never was into this uh, kind of stuff. But Friday Night Lights, I, I didn't care. Never much for the, saw the movie. Never saw yeah, the but TV, for the TV show, series. Either. I started watching because huh. I'm a fan of the actors for some of the other shows, uh, other series, and I was watching. I'm like, oh. Hey, high school football. Okay, wow, you guys are all nuts in Texas. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, I have watched um, the first three seasons of Cobra Kai, and I haven't watched it the last, what, two years or whatever, but it's actually really good. Yeah. And I, that and that's coming from me, who I only saw the first Karate Kid once when I when I was very young. That's a win. But, that's one out of three. You're, you're in Cooperstown. But, but, but I, I remember liking it and then just diving back into it and so easily. And it's so likable, and yeah, uh, there were, there's some genuinely like funny parts. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I was scared so, when they, when they yeah. said, "Oh, we're doing a Karate Kid TV series called Cobra Kai." I'm like, Miyagi's gone. What are we doing? Like, right, don't right. do this. <laughs> yeah, and then it's it's doing well. I mean, yeah. they they got past it. They they hmm. that was not a hurdle for them. That was not like an, an obstacle. It wasn't going to torpedo the series. So yeah. I might have to oh. check it out. I've never seen an episode. I I love the original Karate Kid. I, I thought I, Pat Morita was just great. I think he was nominated for an Oscar for that role. Really. And I just wow. saw an interview recently where he was talking about when he auditioned for the role, he's like, I don't know where it came from, but they were like, all right, do your thing. And he was he started talking like Mr. Miyagi. And he's like, I don't know where it came from, but they freaking loved it. And it got him the role. And this is a guy who we knew as Arnold from Happy Days. Here he <laughs> was, right. you know, yeah. Mr. Miyagi. And he, he made that movie. He was so good in it. So. I, I would say, Joe, give the first, like, Three episodes, uh, Cobra Kai, a chance. Uh, I, yeah. I think you'll like it. That's okay. what I did. Yeah. I was basically like, okay, you got the I'm going to take that recommendation, too, because my sisters, I have two older sisters, absolutely love the show. And oh, I've yeah. I've got to go. i got to go back and check it out. Then. This comes on yeah. comes on the investment you make. And you, you watch the pilot and first thing, like, yes. okay, can you carry me through? Yes. Otherwise, I don't want to do this. And I check IMDb. I check Rotten Tomatoes. I'm like, okay. And then I have friends going, hey, you need to check Cobra Kai. I'm like, all right, fine. All okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, we're just about out of time. Any any other titles come to mind as far as? Uh, uh, Can I make a two... quick recommendation for? Do you have a, a a topic for next time? Not yet. What fire, do you got? Fire your agent. <laughs> Actors who have fallen into the where they now file. Interesting. You know what? All I'm right. sure there's something we could do with that big time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would love to that. hear that. That would be fantastic. <laughs> um, all right. Well, George, thanks for joining yes, us today. It's always you, fun to have Thank a you guest. for having me. Uh, really appreciate being a guest here, guys. Yes. Super fun to, to be here. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And uh, thank you for listening. And we'll leave you with our little ditty. Come to the movies. Come to the movies. Watch Charlie Chaplin. And put some sunshine into your day. Forget the hard times, come to the movies, and try to laugh your troubles away.